Welcome to another message from C3 Mumbai. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. How to rest blessed. This is about is this is about rest. This is about realizing that there is a blessing of rest for you in Christ already. That all you need to do is open the door to in your heart. All you need to do is, is, is know that it's there and stop chasing other things that you're chasing in order to rest. Yeah. Our, our rest is not found watching Netflix, although that can be restful physically. But our rest is not found there. I have watched things on Netflix that have not made me rest but made me scared or made yeah. me kind of freak out. There are certain shows on there that I'm like, that doesn't make me rest at all. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> your rest isn't necessarily on a, on a holiday trip to the Bahamas, although I want to go to the Bahamas <laughs> and have a rest. That would be fantastic, but you can be in the Bahamas and not be rested. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about inner rest. When, when God talks about rest in the Bible, when Jesus talks about it in the Bible, He's not talking about sort of just go have a rest. He's talking about inner rest, yeah. inner peace that affects your external circumstances. This is an internal, uh, this is an internal state of being that affects your ex external world. That's the kind of rest I'm talking about this morning. Why do we need to talk about this? We need to talk about this because, see, I have noticed in myself and as a pastor, as I've just worked, walked through and lead, led this church and done other things in ministry, that one of the things that we can do is we can do a lot of striving. We can do a lot of striving for things. We see others who may get promoted in front of us and say, Hey, listen up, boy, how come they got promoted before me? Was I not the next in line? Have I not been around longer than them? Have I not done this? Have I not done that? Have you ever found yourself saying all of these things? I haven't. Right? Or oh, we go to the other end of the, the spectrum where we just like, you know what? Woe is me. Nothing ever works out for me. Nothing ever happens. You know what? I'm not going to try anymore. I give up. I'm just going to remove myself from everyone. I'm not really going to try too hard to have friends. I'm not going to really try. And we completely resign. Both of, see, God wants to bring you right into the center where He is. The center of the road. So you can travel the path that He has for you and not get knocked off by, by striving for... for for, for whatever it is that your heart says you need, when really all you need is Him, and, or, or resigning to the fact that you're never going to get there. We will do one of the two according to... Sometimes it'll depend on the, it'll be, it'll depend on the day of the week. Sometimes it'll depend on, on whatever, whatever the situation, the circumstance is. But God wants to, wants to actually help you through His Holy Spirit, through the work of Christ on the cross, to actually rest. And have eternal rest so that no matter what you go through, no matter what you face, you've got rest. Anybody want that rest? Yeah. Yep. Well, your rest depends on your anchor. Your rest depends on your anchor. When I was uh, not married, and I must have been in my early, early 20s, one uh, I think uh, I was still living at home. I moved out of home at 26. I bought my first home at 26 and I moved out. So it must have been prior to that. Um, one weekend, my um, dad and mom said, hey, listen, we planned a holiday for the family. And I said, oh, okay, cool. What are we going to do? And they said, well, it's a surprise. We turned up to a place called Mandra, which is uh, said with your nose. Mandra. Mandra, not Bandra. <laughs> Bandra. Mandra in Australia, in Western Australia, Mandurah, just south of Perth. And in Mandurah, there's a river. And on that river, you can hire houseboats. I've got a picture of one that uh, they're going to put up. Um, <clears throat> this, this is a houseboat. See, uh, this was one of the things that we hired. It looks like that. It has a motor on the back, and uh, it has a thing at the front. And you sleep in, the, you sleep in that cabin area in this area at night time. That's where you sleep overnight. You go up the river, and it's quite beautiful. It's quite nice. You see it? Okay. So Dad hired one of these for like seven days. For seven days, we're on this thing. Now, at first, I'm like, Ugh. okay, this is going to be interesting because it's like Dad was the 
the guy who was driving the boat, and it was just us, there was no skipper, like it's Australia, right? You don't have all of those kind of people that do everything for you like you do here. And so, so it's like, okay, the guy gives us the keys, and there's the boat, Here's, we go for it, and we'll see you in seven days. We're like, okay, well, 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 okay, it was, it was all right, it was all right, it was kind of fun at first. I mean, we took our fishing rods, we're jumping off, swimming in the water, having fun, all of that sort of thing. And, and, but, but, but there was one problem with this boat. It had an anchor, okay? So at night time, the plan was is you moor wherever you like along the river and you put the anchor down and it stays there, the boat stays there while you sleep, right? Well, the first night we put the anchor down, I, I, I remember Dad was like, Ryan, I'm a son, he's like, Ryan, we've got to put the anchor out. And I'm like, okay, I'll go put the anchor out. So I have like, I don't know, if I see Popeye to say that man and all of these sorts of things. So I'm like, okay, I guess I just throw it. So I just throw this anchor and it goes in, plop into the water and it sinks on down. And, uh, and, and, and I, I kind of have this locking sort of device on it. So I kind of pull it and make sure, okay, it looks tight. I was like, okay, yeah, is the anchor down right? Yeah, the anchor's down, Dad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, let's, let's rest. So we have our dinner and we go to sleep. Well, about 12 a.m. in the night, oh, it was New Year's, right? So New Year's is happening. Uh, at 12 a.m. at night, uh, there's all these boats flying up the river, woohoo, letting off uh, loud music. You know, we're not allowed to do firecrackers and all of that, and lots of yelling and all of that sort of stuff. And then about, it kind of quiets and quiets down by about 1 a.m and uh, <clears throat> everyone goes to sleep. Well, about 2 a.m., we're all asleep, and there's this almighty boom. <laughs> and the whole boat's shaking all of a sudden. And we're like, what is going on? I get up, and Dad gets up, we run out, we're like, we've seen that we've actually, the boat has run aground, okay? The anchor had kind of come undone. And, and we've run aground, and this boat has like gone into the side of the, river like on shore so we're like ah oh, well, this can't happen and it's like kind of it's the, the 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 waves are coming up so the whole boat's going and it keeps on crashing in so dad's like oh so we try to i have to jump out of the boat and i'm trying to push this thing back out and uh dad's trying to got the thing in reverse and we go and we jump back out and then we put the anchor back in and uh well let me tell you something after that for every single night I did not sleep well because I was scared that that anchor was going to come undone. Now I have a feeling that that anchor was actually too small for the boat. It was like, it's a river, so it's a very sandy bottom of the river. And uh, it was only a little anchor about this big. It was, a, it was quite a big boat. I said, we need a bigger anchor, but I think they had a small one because it was lighter and all of that sort of stuff. But, but see, see, <clears throat> here's my point of this whole story. Is this. I, I could not sleep because of the anchor. I knew the anchor wasn't working properly. And, and every time I could feel the boat moving, I could feel it drifting up, I'd be like, awake. And so would Dad. Because your rest depends on your anchor. Your rest depends on what you're anchored to. And if that anchor isn't locking into something that, is, that brings assurance, that you know, really, you've anchored to it, but it's like, it's shifting, it's moving, it's not really happening for you, it's kind of, it's always, you can't really quite, it's like trying to get your hold, a hold of a bar of soap, it's just going to slip out of your hand. If your anchor is like that, how is your rest going to be? You're not going to find rest, are you? You're going to be constantly striving, or you're going to be constantly resigning to the fact that you're not going to get it, or, or that, that you're always just going to try and try and try and try. You know, when we have faith in Christ, we actually find rest. Why do we find rest? Because we find a sufficient anchor for our soul. When we find Christ, we find a sufficient anchor for our soul. Now, this is important. In the midst of a storm, and let me tell you something. I said this last week. Rest, in terms of our external circumstances, is rarely ever found. I mean, we're trying to always get into that place of comfort and trying to get into that place where our external circumstances are peaceful. Listen to me. This life is imperfect. This world is broken. The news just seems to be getting worse when I turn it on the television or on my internet. You know, people 
tend to not get better. They tend to get worse as they get older. Have you noticed that? Life gets more difficult. I'm, I'm sorry to, to bring this message to you. But the storms of life are such that you yourself need to have peace. You, need, you yourself need to have rest internally. In the midst of storms. And if your anchor is changed into something that is insufficient. Or if the anchor itself is not sufficient to hold the way of the journey. Listen to me. You're never going to find rest. Some of you are like, oh, okay. That's why I'm never able to rest. Yes. What have you anchored your soul to? A way to answer that question was, what have you given power to? That gets you in the depths of your soul. Is it relationships and if people reject you? Is it money, lack thereof, not enough? Is it, is, it, is it your job? Is it promotion? What is it that you have anchored your soul to? If it's not Christ, it's always going to shift because God is the only one who is never changing. Who is always there. Who is never going to change. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. That means He is the beginning and He is the end. All at the same time. He doesn't happen to live within a time frame like we do because He's God. Mm. He's always been there. He always will be. You can anchor your soul to Him. He is not changing. In the midst of a storm, you need to know that your anchor is fixed to Him. See, here's the thing that I do when the storms of life come, is I forget very easily how deep the chain to His anchor goes. That is never ending. You know when Depression comes in my life. I, I sometimes I get down about things when I can't sort them out, when I can't get them right, and it just it just I get locked in. And, 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 and normally it's because of my own failures that this kind of depression will kind of start to sink in. But it's amazing. When I bring that to him and I realize for a moment, hold on a second, I'm depressed because I've I've anchored my soul on my ability to overcome. And I haven't overcome in this certain part of my life. And so, so I'm feeling down about it. But hold on, there's, there's something more here. And it, it is Christ. And I realize that the anchor goes deeper than my failures. Good. Or when I get into a place of panic because of finances. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When you panic, you're like... I'm panicking about my finances. I, I, I get to that point where I'm like, why am I panicking about my finances? Because I'm, I'm feeling like I don't know what to do next. And I realize, hold on a second, Jesus is here with me. And I realize the anchor, oh, it goes beyond my panic. It goes beyond my, my disability right here. And he ta he's taking me beyond what I can't do. And faith is born. You know, when, when for me, I'm just, I'm just talking about this because I'm, I'm helping you by being vulnerable in front of you. Just like what Harry did today, that was brilliant what Harry did. By being vulnerable, that's what we are about here. We are an authentic church, right? We're not here to, to kind of preach something as, as people who have made it. No, we are people who are here because we need Christ. Amen? Amen. So this is what I'm telling you this stuff for. But, you know, I get lonely. I struggle with loneliness. I'm an introvert. And generally, introverted personalities really struggle with loneliness. Anybody an introvert here? Okay, and you know, like I can pretty much guarantee that loneliness will be a thing for you. Most of that uh, loneliness is really felt by, by me when I have conflict in relationships, particularly with my beautiful wife, when I've done something, not when she, she never does anything. <laughs> and there's conflict as a result. I'm <laughs> pretty serious. I don't know if at the time, but it's me. Um, uh, <laughs> but when those conflicts come, my, my instant feeling is loneliness. 
like I'm just like now sometimes I'm a, I'm male, so I'm like girls are a little bit more in touch with their emotions and what it's all about. So I'm like, oh, I'm feeling sad. Oh, I'm sad. Just gonna watch TV. Feeling sad. Feeling sad. You know. Girls will be like, oh, I'm feeling sad and I need to talk to someone about it. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling sad. Like, don't want to talk to anyone. Don't want to talk about it. That's kind of how I am. Boys? Yeah? Okay, anyway. Yeah. But I, there's this conflict in my relationship and I get lonely. And once again, Christ is there. And I think, hold on a second, why am I so lonely? I, I'm not alone. He's called me to restore my relationships and He's called me to forgiveness. Because He's forgiven me. What am I doing here alone, by myself, doing this? Why don't I... Oh, hold on a second. This goes a little deeper than when I saw the ghost. And see, this is when, when you begin to have that... If I, I, feel, I feel sorry for a person who does not know Christ yet, who does who anchors their souls to all sorts of different things and they're just all shifting. You won't find anything that you can put your heart on that is not going to fail you. They all will. Money will fail you. Relationships will fail you. People will fail you. Kids will fail you. Grandparents will fail you. It's it's all going to fail you. But Him. And when you come to these moments where things fail and you have Christ with you, you realize, hold on a second, it goes deeper. Oh, God is with me. He goes deeper. He goes deeper. Yeah, you can clap. You can clap. Oh, let's give God a big clap. God bless you. In Christ, when we come to the places, the storm of life, when we realize that we find rest in Him, we realize that He wants to take us deeper. You know, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, it says this. I love this scripture. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. <clears throat> Firm and secure. Everybody say this with me. Firm and we said that differently all the different times. <laughs> but that's okay, you said it. You want to try again? Yes. Firm. 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 <laughs> okay, here you go. No, just kidding. Firm. Uh, okay, ready? Firm. Firm. And secure. Secure. <laughs> it, it, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Who's Melchizedek? Melchizedek is in the Old Testament, in Genesis. He appeared before Abram. And the crazy thing about Melchizedek is no one knew where he came from. No one knew. All they knew is he was the king of Salem, which means he was the king of peace. Wow. Most likely it was, it was actually Jesus Christ had appeared at that point in time before Abram. And the crazy thing about Melchizedek and Abram is this. is Before, you can read this, before Abram did anything, yeah. Melchizedek blessed him. Yeah. Before Abram did anything, before he got it right. And you know what, what Abram did as a, as a result of that blessing? He gave him a tithe. How often have you heard a tithe message say, you know, you need to give in order, or you, 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 you think in, in terms of religious, you need to give in order to get. Now, Kizadek blessed Abram. His, his tithe was a response to the blessing. Isn't that cool? Ah, yes, yes. But the point is this. In the order of Melchizedek means See, Levi was the other priest. He's making reference to another priest called Levi who used to make a sacrifice on behalf of the rest of the country, on on the Israelites. And it was something that you had to do to get God's favor. But, But you see, Melchizedek, well, he gave the blessing before Abram gave anything. So Jesus is in the order of Melchizedek, meaning he is in the order of blessing you first. Before you get it right. Come on. Woo! Good. I'm enjoying.
enjoy myself preaching. I'm just going to preach more. We have this anchor for our soul, firm and secure. And it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. I want you to hear this. Jesus has gone where you cannot go. Jesus has gone where you cannot go. Sometimes when we get to the storms of life and we get into depression and we pray, God, I can't get out of this. Sometimes when you come to the place of loneliness and it's gnawing on your soul and destroying you and you pray, God, I can't get out of this. Sometimes when things aren't working out for you financially and you just wish they would, but they just don't seem to work out and it's an ongoing struggle. And once again, it's, it's getting into a place where you are just struggling. And you pray, God, I can't seem to get out of this. You've got to remember that He has gone behind the veil. He has gone into the places you can't yet go. As your leader. And get this. See, he goes behind the veil. As our forerunner. You know what a forerunner does? Well, you're going to love this. You know what a forerunner does? A forerunner would run before a king. Wow. And go and stand before a king and say, The king is about to come. This is what Jesus is doing for you. Wow. He's gone behind the veil. He's gone behind into the places you cannot go. He's going, he's going into places where you may not have victory yet. And he has gone and said to God, the Father, he's saying, listen, my child is coming. Yeah. Yeah. They have victory. Yeah. He has announced you are coming home. They are waiting for you in heaven. Because Jesus has announced your arrival already. Every struggle you have to go through, every trial you have to go through, every temptation that you walk through, from this time onwards with Christ, I'm telling you something is going to take you home. Come on. And they are waiting in the stadium for you to cross that finishing line. If someone could bring me that, uh, mm, that whiteboard, please. <laughs> they are waiting for you. To cross the finish line because Jesus has announced you were coming. Wow. You know, rest comes when you realize Jesus, this is a slide, rest comes when you realize Jesus has gone into places you couldn't go and announced your victorious arrival through Him. Amen. This is when rest comes. Rest comes when you realize that Jesus is your forerunner. You just have to follow Him. Don't follow the girl. Don't follow the boy. I'm not pointing at anyone, so I look over there. <laughs> Pointing at the law because if I look at anybody like, hey, you thought you could make it. A little room like this is a little difficult. <laughs> Don't follow the money. Mm. Don't follow the deal. Yeah. Don't follow that boss and what they're doing, even, you, even though you know it's wrong. Don't follow that. Do not link your soul to that. Yeah. One thing, if you want rest, if you want peace, if you want hope in your life, if one thing you chain your, 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 your heart to is, is Christ. Yeah. He is your forerunner. Yeah. He is your victory. Listen, I want to draw your picture. Is that okay? I'm going to draw your picture. 
So, uh, I mean, I've been practicing my art. Good luck. Yeah. Gaurav, uh, I'm sure you have uh, drawn lots of anchors in your life, being a captain and all. You could probably do a better job than me. Just, to, just for all intents and purposes. <laughs> that is an anchor. <laughs> And this is the chain for the anchor. You get it? Yeah. And here's the bail. You know, on our journey in life, as we go through it, and the storms come, we've got to realize something when panic comes, and when we get to those moments of panic, that the chain goes deeper. When depression comes, oh, I'm writing it upside down. Anyway, you'll get it. You've got to realize the chain goes deeper. When loneliness comes, you've got to realize the chain goes deeper. When addiction bites and there's stuff that you're trying to overcome, you got to realize the chain goes deeper. And you might feel like, God, I don't know if I could get through. <laughs> or maybe that's so by yourself, but with Him, the chain goes deeper. He has made it all the way to heaven. And He died along the way. He went through so much on our behalf that it killed him. It killed him. He rose again. Victorious. Satan wasn't counting on him rising again. Satan thought he had victory over Jesus the day that Jesus died. Satan, all of Satan and his and his uh, and his minions. <laughs> They all celebrated when they saw Jesus die. But when he rose again, there was victory because it meant that death had no power over him. And he said these words to all of you and all of me, all of us. He said these, these words, he just said, come follow me. <coughs> you don't know the way to where which I can go and where I can take you. But I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. The anchor goes deeper. The chain goes deeper. When you are faced with your issues, you've got to remember the chain goes deeper. Everybody say this. The chain goes deeper. It goes behind the places that you can't see yet right to heaven. If you keep letting that thing lead you, you're going to be okay. You're going to find rest. Hebrews 4, chapter 14 and 16 says this, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we possess, we possess, profess, excuse me. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. You know what this chain is? This is faith. See, faith is what takes you to the anchor. You got to hold fast. To the chain. Do not let it go. You want to know how to overcome sin? You got sin in your life? Don't take your hands off the chain to put your hands on something else. You want to overcome sin? That's all you have to do. Do not take your hands off the chain of faith. Keep it there. 
and keep them firm and secure and do not let go. It doesn't matter how high the tide goes. It doesn't matter if the monsoon and the tide come at the same time and the whole, the whole city floods. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're holding fast. You're going to find that you've got to hold on to the chain. For we do not, and listen to this, I mean, you've got to get this. Verse 15. For we do not have a high priest. Okay, good. We do not have a high priest who is unable to feel sympathy for our weakness. But we have one who has been tempted in every way. We have a priest, a high priest, who's gone behind the veil, who has been tempted in every way to let go of the chain. But he held on. Just as we are, he yet he did not sin. Let us then, I love this, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. With confidence. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. What is the anchor of your soul? What's the anchor for your soul? What are you holding fast to? Man, there's you guys who could come. What are you holding fast to? When the storms of life come, when trials come and knock you around in the depths of your soul, you're know, like, God, I don't even know if I've got the grip to hold on to you in all of this. God, like I can't, I can't see you. I can't feel you. I don't know where you are. I don't know where my hope has gone. Brian's been talking about rest and Sunday. I don't know about rest. I don't feel any rest right now. If you hold the chain, you can't see him. Because he has, a, he has a job to do in heaven. And that job is announcing your arrival. His job is your forerunner. And it's not just a job of like, hey, hey, listen, uh, I just want to let you know, Jesus, Jesus, uh, God, that such and such. Here's an announcement. It is an announcement of it that they would make for a king. That's for you. All of heaven stands. Jesus comes with the lips. He says, hey, I have come to announce the arrival. I can't see God. I don't know where he is. I don't know what he's doing. I can't feel it. He's gone behind, beyond the veil. But even better, even better, even though Jesus is there, He's left us with the Holy Spirit, who's here, who's present. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is God Himself, and He is our helper. Because He knows, God knows, that there will be moments when you will lose your faith, and when you will lose the grip on the chain. Sometimes, for some of us, and I know this has been some of the cases for me, is I have let go of the chain. The Holy Spirit has let go of me. Yeah. It's the same for some of you. Some of you are in that place. You let go of the chain. I don't know. I don't know. But you're here this morning because the Holy Spirit has let go of you. I don't know. I don't know if he's there. I don't know if he's how many years and years and years and years. What we've got to do is turn to him. Because God has so much more for you than striving. God has so much more for you 
then this resignation that there's nothing really going to ever come your way and you're always going to be trying and nothing good's going to happen. He's got so much more for you than that. He's got rest for your soul. And out of that rest, it changes your vision, it changes your purpose, it changes the way you see life, it changes the way you do life. It changes the way you, you act with people. It changes the way you act with your family. It changes the way you are in your marriage. It changes the way you are in the world. It changes the way you are in your job. It changes the way you are in, 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 in your, your, your every moment of your life. You change because you've got bread. And God wants that for you right now. C3 Mumbai is a church in the heart of India's commercial capital where a diverse group of people brought together to worship God and to pass on the hope of salvation by grace that we freely received. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram or tweet us on our handle at C3 Mumbai. Hey, it's Ryan here. If you enjoyed this message and you live in Mumbai, we would love to meet you in person. Why don't you come along 11.30 a.m. Studio 10 at Famous Studios in Mahalakshmi.